All right, so the part where we got a little bit bogged down last time was in the uh, matrix decomposition uh, and gauss seidel We were talking about gauss seidel I think we kind of got hung up. Um, so let's look at that. Um, all right, I guess the way I have this ordered is first we'll talk about matrix decomposition, and then we will, uh, hopefully I'll go back to look at, yeah, I'll go back to look at the gauss seidel implementation. All right, so matrix, matrix decomposition, again, remember the goal of what we're doing here. We are always trying to solve for temperature, but in order to solve for temperature, we need an A matrix, our vector temperature, and our B vector. So we have to come up with the coefficients, essentially, that go into our A matrix, and that's really the, that's really the, the tedious part of doing this. Um, so let's write out the, the approach that we're going to use. Um, so it's kind of this flow chart, and now we're, we're taking into account that we're doing this for temperature dependence. So it's not just as straightforward as solving once for temperature. We have to do an iterative approach. Okay, so the first step is going to be um, assume a temperature distribution. Right, so assume TI distribution. Uh, that could be that you just you know, you're, you're starting with a guess value. Uh, maybe that's like the ambient temperature, 300K, 500K, whatever is kind of close to what you think it might be. Step two is going to be uh, set up A and, oops, a and uh, B using something we're going to call T hat I. Right, so that is our our guess, right? So when we assume a temperature distribution, when we go back to step one, we're assuming that we're going to call that T hat I. That's our guessed temperature distribution. Next, we set up A and B using this T hat I value, the, uh, the array, array of values that we started with. Um, three is going to be solve the matrix uh, equation. A x equals b uh, to get ti. Okay, and we're doing that for i is i is equal to 1 to n for the full set of temperatures. Step four is going to be compute the error between ti and t hat i. Um, so there's different ways, like I said, of computing error. One way would be you just go through and find the biggest temperature difference among the two, and you make sure that that temperature difference is below some tolerance that you have. Another way would be that you go through and take maybe like the uh, RMS or some statistical measure of distance between those. So like a, a common way would be to say my error is equal to the square root of 1 over n times the sum for all i oops, for all i of t i hat minus t i uh, squared. Right? So we're going to make, make it squared so that it's always positive. Right? That's, that's one way of estimating the error. If that error falls below, you're pretty well set that you've, you've converged. All right, so then you have to make a decision, right? If the error is greater than the tolerance, that means we haven't yet converged, and we just need to, so if error is greater than tolerance, we need to go back up and assume a new TI distribution, T hat I. Um, well, what is, and what is that distribution? Well, that is going to be, we're going to say T hat I is equal to T I. Right, we're, we're copying all the values that we just computed for TI and then updating our guesses based on that, that new solution. Uh, if, right, so if error is less than tolerance, then we're done. All right, this is how you're going to go about doing this. It's, it's similar, again, to the, to the Gauss-Seidel that we started talking through. Your guessing temperature is using that to come up with these constants, solving, and then computing an error and going back to iterate. Um, 
Questions on the process? Yeah. Yeah, and, and we'll see that next. I'll show you how that kind of works. But right, you're using you, the entire point of guessing ti t hat i is that you need some way of evaluating properties. That can be wrong, right? It can be inaccurate, but eventually the the t hat i and the t i will converge so that you you do get an accurate solution for the temperatures. Yeah, Lucas. Mm, that's a dangerous thing to say. <laughs> Not any guess will always converge. I would say, like, if you're in the ballpark, like, so let's say you guess, you know, the value one for your temperature, and you're in the scale of Kelvin. It may or may not converge, right? You you probably want to guess something like 300 if you're in the scale of Kelvin. So I would, you know, try to get your guess as close as possible to begin with. Um, it, it will be more stable and converging, and it'll also converge faster. Right? This stuff is not necessarily going to converge that fast. Um, if you look at the lecture example that we started talking about last time, I think it takes over a thousand iterations to converge, or something like that. So it's, it's actually not that fast. The computer can do it pretty quickly for simple problems, but, um, but yeah, there's a lot of iteration. So good guess values will help with that. OK, uh, so let's see. Moving on. What we have now is um, we've talked about the, the, the matrix inversion part. So let's just do a quick summary of like, what it actually looks like uh, to, to group these things together and get the right coefficients. And then we'll go back to the, the Python file example and look at that. All right, so here's the, the general, um, general equation for node i. You'd have uh, similar equations for nodes 1 and n, but I just we'll just do it for i. Uh, so this is the equation that we plugged into E's. So if we're talking about doing uh, matrix decomposition, right, what is, what's that going to look like? Well, really, all we need to do for matrix decomposition is group terms. So we're going to go through. Find everything that's multiplying t i minus one, t i, and t i plus one, and group them together. So for this example, that would look like this. We have t i, uh, and that's going to be multiplied by all of this stuff. So we have in the numerator, we have k. Uh, k is a function of t hat i minus one plus t hat i divided by two. Right, so first thing we're noticing is we're using our guess values. We have this, the guess profile. We're using those values to compute. Um, so that's, uh, let's see, times AC over delta X. Um, and that actually should be minus, right? So minus K. Uh, and then what else is multiplying TI? We have another minus K. Uh, which is a function of now t hat i plus 1 uh, my, uh, plus t i hat over 2 times ac over delta x. Oops. ac over delta x. All right, so that closes t i. So this whole thing here, right, this is my a i i entry in the matrix. One, one like subtle thing that you could do is, if you think about the way that the program is computing this stuff, anytime I've hit node i in the computation, like I'm doing 4i you know, four I equals 1 or 2 to whatever, by the time I'm computing i, I already have an estimate for i minus 1. So you could actually use, instead of t hat i minus 1, you could use just t i minus 1. And that might help you converge a little bit faster. Um, but it's kind of like a minor. A minor improvement. You, you'd, anytime you have ti or ti plus one, you can't do that. All right. Okay, so that's for ti. The second term was for, I'm going to run out of room here, T, ti plus one. And that's going to be multiplied by conductivity at t hat i plus one plus t hat i divided by two. Uh, times AC over delta X. 
Uh, and then we have plus ti minus 1. It's going to be multiplied by something similar, which is k at t hat i minus 1, t hat i over 2, times ac over delta x. Uh, and then that totally out of room. So that's all equal to, on the right-hand side, minus rho e evaluated at t hat i uh, times delta x over ac times i squared. All right, so we have aii. We have here, this is uh, a i, i plus i plus 1. That's impossible to read. Let's try that again. A i comma i plus 1. Here we have a i, i minus 1. And here we have b i. All right, so this, this exercise is what you have to go through to get matrix decomposition to work. Just take this now. We're going to plug that in to our uh, Python file and solve it. So let's actually look at, at that right now. OK, let's see. So current lead, I think the example is this one. Right, this is the one we started talking through. Again, what you can see is it's all the same. But here where we have our A matri matrices, we're doing k, our function kf, which I've defined up here. In the same way I did for e's, we call it kf here, rho ef here. Same rule applies. The, the functions, um, as, a, as a good practice, the functions should only include variables that are passed into it or defined locally. So if you're going to start using constants and stuff, make sure you include them as an argument or define them in the, in the function itself. Okay, so now down here, we're, yeah, we're evaluating kf at our, at our temperature um, right here uh, times ac over dx. Right? So it's the, same, it's the same idea. It's really kind of straightforward once you get to it. But um, we're calling our guess, instead of t hat, we're calling it tg. Uh, but we set up the matrices based on this, get down to this point, and then solve using the sp solve command for a to get our actual temperature. All right. Now, the, the difference between this and last time is this was not in a loop last time. Right? We just did this once and we were done. Now we compute the error. So I'm computing it this way, which is slightly different from what I told you. But it's uh, t minus tg. So this gives you back a vector of temperatures. I'm going to take this. This is like a dot squared, so every element squared. Uh, and then I'm going to look for the maximum. So, you know, the way I told you is fine. This is going to be a little bit more conservative, right? Because you're not dividing by n or taking the square root. So if this gets, if this converges, the other error would also have have converged. Um, but we calculate the error here. I'm going to print out the error. I'm going to update my guess. One important thing I want to mention for Python: if you just say tg is equal to t, it's actually taking the in memory the thing that you've created for TG, and just swapping out the name for that same space in memory, which is not what you want. right? You want two separate things that you're tracking. One is your guest temperature, and one is your actual temperature. So we need to use this copy command, uh, which will create a new place in memory that you're storing the TG. Right? So if you just you know, follow this approach, you'll be fine. But just to say that's, that's why you do that. All right, and then we're, uh, we're indented over, so we repeat this until the error falls below the tolerance, uh, and then hopefully it converges. So we could look at this and see if that runs. OK, so this example, it converged in uh, 25 iterations. And you can see how it starts, right? It starts not very well. Right? There's a, a lot of error to start with. If you can't see, that's 81,000. Pretty quickly, though, it starts tailing off and then after you know, 25 iterations, we're, we're well below the error limit. Uh, and our plot is there, right? So we're, we're in good shape. Yeah? So just a couple of things that might be typos, just to make sure I understand. In the ignore point, the i entry, if you have n minus 1, for both of those, right? If you have n minus 2 there, that's uh, You're probably right. So this is, let's see. So 
you're talking about over here? So the second line there, instead of n minus 2 comma n minus 1, should n minus 1 comma n minus 2? Hmm. Let's see, how did I set this up? So this is, yeah, it might be a typo. So this would be, this should be all the n minus 1th entry, and then this would be n minus 2, right? N minus 2. I think that, because that's coming from the left. So we had set up the matrix where it's 0, 1, I, I, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think you're right. So this is n minus 1, n minus 2 here. It's still solved magically, so. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I had copied these over from MATLAB, as you can tell. Yep, you're right. Very good. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. So let's try it. Let's see. This will probably break it. No, it works. Okay. Basically the same thing, basically the same answer. But so there's a little bit more sloppiness that you can, can get away with with numerical solutions, as you can see here. But don't, don't take that as a, a guidance. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, yep, so I should be starting at 0, which makes that position 0. And then, yeah, bookkeeping down here. So don't start with MATLAB and convert to Python. That's another, another uh, lesson learned. That'll be a common theme probably through the semester. OK, any other questions on this? OK.